ipmnation.com. Live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by ipmnation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is not a drill. All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Evening. Thank you for joining us on what is going to turn out to be a very exciting, I have to say, a very exciting all natural being for a lot of reasons. Uh, so let's, let's do this. We're going to have kind of uh, an abbreviated open. Let me just welcome everybody and thank you for joining me for what is now the 393rd episode, 393 of the number one rated show here on ipmnation.com. I am absolutely thrilled to be with you, as I am every evening, and our goal as we do this show each and every night is to make sure that we're able to do whatever it takes. You know, the hashtag that I've become fond of of late is that we're into doing whatever it takes that allows us to mortal up, right? So that no matter what fate does, no matter what the chop block is, we know we can square our shoulders. We're not going to be our own wrecking ball. Right, And we're going to get in and do whatever we can to make sure that our heart's highest priority is always on the top of our list. So the, the reason that I wanted to do an abbreviated opening tonight and get right to our guest is that if you're like me, I'm 50, what, like I've been 49 about 10 times, I guess. So I've got a little bit of an age thing going on. And I thought, you know, as I battle back from... The brain tumor. And, you know, if you're like me, you're like, oh, okay, it's time to battle back. So why don't we just head on out and we'll go for a 20-mile run? Or why don't we just head on out and we'll, uh, you know what I mean, we'll go for a nice long bike ride or we'll do this or do that. But then I thought maybe at my age, you know, when I have the the certification and, and, and know how to do a push-up and this and that and everything else. But at my age, I thought, you know what, it wouldn't be a bad idea to learn from cutting edge experts, right? To learn, because I'm an old guy now and you got to figure out, okay, great. What are you going to do, right? And I'm very, very lucky. I'm in, in, I'm pretty decent health, but to be honest, um, as uh, Ashley calls it and my friends around me call it, the, you know, you've heard of the freshman 20. Uh, well, this is the tumor 25, right? <laughs> so when you spend as much time as I have being told, oh, you can't lift any more than a gallon of milk, Right, you can only do that joke so many times. Well, I hate milk. Why would I possibly pick up that vile liquid? But to get their point, you know, they didn't. They don't want me running. They don't want me biking. They don't want me doing all these other things. Right. So now that I'm topless, now that I'm no longer with a shunt and all these other things going on, I thought, all right, it's time to lose the tumor twenty five, right, so that I can get into whatever kind of bathing suit weather a 50-whatever-year-old uh, can get into right before the spring. So I thought, okay, now what we got to do is we got to call in the big guns. And when I first saw this young man, and you know, he's, got, he's certified out the butt. He has all these different things, all this know-how. And he does this full time. This is like a, a real gig, right? This is what he does. And I saw this video of him kneeling, kneeling on his knees, right? Kneeling. And right in front of him are, are a stack of these 25 plates. And I laugh to myself as I do this because I thought a great gag, right, would be me trying to model what it is that he does. So he's on his knees. He just 
I'm assuming he takes his torso in his arms and from his knees, mind you, he jumps and he's able to get high enough to have his feet land on these four plates in front of him. So I just thought it'd be pretty cool to do a video where, you know, it's me, I'm on my knees, I get ready to jump. And uh, what happens is I basically, you know, I have to get to one knee and I can put my hands on my hips and then I'm lucky if I can get my foot to even press onto the plates and everything else. So this guy is the real deal. And you might notice the DNF, because I like to think of it as damn near faultless, right? But who am I kidding with me wearing the shirt? But when he's wearing the shirt, you could say, oh, yeah, he's, he's darn near faultless. So what I wanted to do this evening, not just for myself, because uh, our guest this evening is going to help train me, right, as I battle back from this. I thought, what a great way with everyone and their brother and their sister setting New Year's resolutions. What a great thing it would be to have a true expert on that could say, oh, well, did you ever think of this or did you ever think of that? So let me jump to the thread real quick and then I'll introduce uh, our guest for this evening, my new trainer. And, uh, and maybe we can see if there's some things he can answer for us, what he plans, you know, thumb screws, stretching me on the rack, that kind of thing, what he plans on putting me through and see if you can learn with me being the crash test dummy. But uh, let me say hello to Henry. Henry, good evening. Wayne, good evening. Mary, nice to see you. Hope all's well with you and Joseph. Candace, thank you for joining me. Jamie, thank you so very much for hanging out with us this evening. I got your message a little earlier. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better now that they got this string of spaghetti out of me. It's like an alien. I finally got this thing out. I'm feeling great. Candace says, no speedo, please. Oh, if I could jump high enough, Candace, you could see that I'm actually doing the show in a speedo. Uh, David Ray Bowman, brother, nice to see you. As always, thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. And Jamie, as I just said, hi to you as well. Lee Rowley. Lee, I was going to ask you about this today. Just please know uh, that I want to dedicate the show to you and to Carla and to just what a backbreaking day today had to be. So I didn't, I didn't think to say to you, Hey, is it okay to mention why? So I'm not going to, but I wanted you and Carla to know that I've been thinking about you all day. I just, I can't get it out of my mind. So I wish you all the absolute best. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Let me introduce, and I know you're thinking, wait a minute, Brian, Henry Noel from Thinking Re-Envisioned and then we have his sidekick, Wayne, who is like a technical guru, the technical expertise that pulls this all together. How could you, I mean, if you were going to have another expert, it, it has to be a Noel, right? So the first Noel, the second Noel, the third Noel. Uh, and before I do this, let me just say thank you. It's okay to say if you want. Well, I, I just, I've been thinking a, a lot about you and Carla and about, uh, Aria and and the anniversary and the birthday and everything else. So, uh, uh, my heart absolutely goes out to you guys. All right. So, I would like to, for whatever uh, that amounts to, I would like to uh, at least dedicate the show or say that uh, in the show that it's it's. Um, I've just been thinking about you guys all day. All right. So now, in getting to our first guest for this evening, Candace, thank you very much. I've been thinking about them just like you today. And getting with our first guest, it's Wayne Noel, right? Henry Noel's brother, Wayne. It's Wayne's son, Derek, and he has a company called Derek Noel Fitness. And he's the young guy you see all over the internet, tearing it up, leaping tall buildings. You know, if it was still phone booths, he'd be the one that you'd see going in, dressed in like a suit and coming out with a cape. And I don't think he wears tights, but you get where I'm going with that. And he's just absolutely amazing when it comes to... You know, we talk all the time about mortal up, the spiritual side or the mental side, but he has it dialed in physically as well. So what I'd love to do without uh, uh, prolonging it anymore is to welcome Derek Noel from Derek Noel Fitness. Derek, you still on the line with us? I sure am. There you go. I have to tell you, as soon as, well, I got your T-shirt, and we were showing it here earlier, and your logo's up now, uh, Ashley said, boy, that is really something else, those dumbbells in the DN. So uh, everyone's digging your logo already. Thank you so very much. And I know we're working to get a portion of your studio on camera. And what I'm hoping, Derek, if it's cool with you, is maybe have you come on once a week for a, a segment and say, okay, Bri, here's, you know, here's what I'm thinking about. 
uh, as Henry says, hey there, D-man, um, you know, here's what you're thinking about having me do, and here's what I'm doing. And then maybe we could have other guests call in, and you could answer some questions if that's cool with you. Kathy, good evening. Thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. Maybe, Derek, we could have you answer some questions for them as well. But if you would, give me an idea of how you got started in this. How has this become a passion of yours? And I know you have boot camps. You train people morning, noon, and night. Uh, when I talk to your dad, he's like, now nah, he's at the gym. Now nah, he's out running. No, nah, he's out training. How did this become a passion of yours? Uh, well, it actually started back in high school uh, where I would started playing a little bit more sports. And before that, I was really big nerd. Still am, by the way. Uh, played a ton of video games in like middle school uh, and I went out to join the football team in 10th grade and when I joined the 10th grade the biggest kid on the football team he was probably over 300 pounds was outrunning me Ooh. because I was so out of shape Okay. so I immediately quit the football team and went into the weight room the next day walked right up to the supervisor and go I have absolutely no idea what I'm about to be doing. Can I help you? And this guy, uh, one of the funniest people I've ever known, but also one of the biggest influences, offered to train me all summer long. And I just started going in every day, worked out with him, learned a lot from him. Okay. And through high school, I was working out. And then I kind of fell out of it my senior year. You know, things go on. Sure. You're 17, 18 years old. You're starting to have a good time. And then you go off to college, and you have the freshman 15 that you get. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought it was 20, but I get you. I got you. Yeah. Fresh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, well, for me, it was the freshman 80. Ooh. Well, so, then I don't feel too bad. You know, a little bit of truth in advertising, it's more like the tumor 30. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's since you're being like, yeah, I think it's 29 pounds, tomato, tomato, right? But I'm right there. 29 and three quarters. 29 and three quarters. But you know what, Derek, let me say this. One of the things that helps me is at 6'3". I can carry yeah. another 40 or 50 pounds around and people go, yeah, have you gained a little weight? Well, I've gained a house. But at 6'3", it kind of... You know, it kind of spreads itself out a little bit. So I've, I've, uh, I've kind of got that going for me. But I think it's time. And with your help, I'm looking forward. And uh, Candace says, is it an actual boot camp? She says she needs a boot camp. No joke. Candace, it is an actual boot camp. And he's like a drill instructor. But what I love about Derek is when he says, oh, drop and give me. You remember from Animal House, drop and give me 20, drop and give me 50. He's right along with everybody. Right, it's not like he stands there with a clipboard and goes, "Oh, okay, two hundred and fifty jumping jacks." Right? No, he's doing it right along with them, which I thought was really impressive as well. Just so you know. So, Derek, what do you have, what do you have in mind for someone that's my age? Right, I'm probably one of the oldest people here uh, in the thread. Someone that's uh, you know in their mid to late fifties, but you know, like today, I got bored and I went out for a ten k. I mean, I can run forever. I can bike almost as long. Um, but I'd like to do something more than just aerobic. You've, you've seen the gym here in the studio. So what do you have planned, not just for me, but for other people listening when they go, oh, man, my New Year's resolution is to try to somehow get back in shape. What do you got for well, us old guys and girls? If there's, if there's any old girls listening, let me just say, hey, what do you got for us old guys? There, there's no such thing as old girls. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Oh, boy, you're uh, cleaning up already, aren't you? Yeah, they're oh, just yeah. cashing the checks left and right, I bet. Um. So the first thing is we need to make sure that you are doing things that your body can actually handle. Okay. Which is a little bit more than before uh, with the tumor and having right. the shunt in and everything like that. But we still need to kind of play around that. Okay. And whatever your doctor says... In the end, is going to go because I am not a doctor. I am right. not a physical therapist. Good point. I'm not qualified to answer those kinds of questions. Gotcha. That makes sense. And good for you to right. remember to say that, right? Just because you don't want to, you know, anyone say, "Oh, well, what about this or that?" You should know my doctors. They don't. I, I was deadlifting 350. I was deadlifting. I love deadlifting, right? It was just something I enjoyed. But they don't want me deadlifting. They don't want me kickboxing. And they don't want me squatting a lot of heavy weight 
until they're sure that the dura mater at the top and at the bottom of my skull, the two different places that the dura mater has been punctured, that they're certain that that's had some time to heal. So other than squats, deadlifts, they don't want me kickboxing, as I said, and they're not crazy about me skiing or really aggressively downhill mountain biking just because if I fall, right, I get, you know, I'm kind of vulnerable in a couple places in my skull. So that's, uh, th- those are the only things that they've said, Brad, look, you need to hold back a little bit. And, uh, but they know about my running. They know about my cycling. They know, you know, uh, how much I love just to go out and come back four hours later on a run. Um, so those are the only things that they've been like, hey, uh, d- don't do that really heavy duty lifting. So that's what you have to work with. Which is actually a pretty good idea, especially because, you know, it has to deal with blood pressure. And if you're doing a heavy lift, your blood pressure actually does get affected. And even if it is just for a split second at a time, right. with what's going on with you, that split second can yeah. be a big thing. Sure. Well, I could blow a gasket, right? And everyone's going, oh, well, you know, what do you think about a stroke? What do you think about a seizure? So I'm, I'm willing, right, to kind of listen. And I was talking to my family about it, Derek. I was talking to your dad about it, for that matter. Talking to uh, your Uncle Henry. I'm, I, I, I'm 50 whatever it is now, right? I was born in 1961. So what's, what's that make me? 57, 58, somewhere around in there. And I'm never going to be 2% body fat. I'm never going to bench press 400 pounds. I'm never going to deadlift 500 pounds. So a part of... What you're up against is me thinking, because I still feel like I'm 21 years old, brother. I, I still feel like I can do all these things, but I'm committed to listen to you go, Bry, you're on the heavy side of 21 now. <laughs> so you need, <laughs> you need to get over yourself and dial it back a little bit because I'm just, I'm never going to get back to where I was. And so mentally, Derek, I had to prepare myself to be okay with that, right? I had to prepare myself where I say, Derek, why don't you teach me how to jump up from the knees and land on the plates or do any of the cool things that I see you doing? And it's humbling to know that there might very well come a point where you go, Bri, let's, you know, baby steps, right? Let's go a little slower. You're not going to be able to do this. So uh, it's been a big adjustment for me. So thank you for all the time that you've spent with me in person and on the phone kind of grooming me. And getting ready for this. And I think maybe for some of our other listeners, Jenny says, really glad to hear him say that. Good guy. He is a good guy. Most say my way is the best way for everyone. Jenny, I can tell you that Derek is not like that at all. So, Derek, I'll let you take it away. Some of the things that you would say, you know, I have the the multi-purpose gym. I have the squat rack. I have the heavy bags. I have the sandbags. I have the pull-up bars. I have all the rest of that. What would be uh, – and J- let me uh, – Jamie also asked a question. Question here: Do you have any stretching exercises that you would recommend before activities? So let's take it from there, Derek. If that's cool with you, talk to us a little bit about stretching. Is it important? Is it not important? Is it more important before the workout, after the workout? What say you? So yeah, let's start off with stretching. Um, a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. lots of yelling. Um, <laughs> A lot, a lot of people assume that you need to be doing a lot of static stretching. You need to okay. stretch out your hamstrings. You need to stretch all of these muscles uh, before you do exercise. Okay. That's actually the opposite. You want to get them warmed up, but you don't want to stretch them out. Okay. So there's something called dynamic warm-up, where instead of doing things like stretching out your legs, and your arms and things like that, you get them moving. You get the blood flowing. Okay. And you don't quite want to break a huge sweat, but you want to definitely feel like your body is warming up because when your body is warm, you're getting that body into the mood that it goes, okay, I'm ready to actually move now. I'm ready to do what I'm supposed to do because sometimes, and especially as time goes on, your body decides to go, "Mm, I don't really want to do that right now. Sure. So (laughs) starting out with dynamic, so static stretching is something like stretching your hamstrings, like toe touches, uh, extended, hanging out down there, bent over for 30 seconds. What you want to do is a dynamic type of stretch. So doing like arm swings and butt kickers or walking along and going down and touching the ground and standing back up. Uh, don't worry, I can't kick my own butt either, but I can sure try. (laughs) Uh, So you're suggesting we do bend over and touch our toes. Yes. Okay. Just don't hold it for any more than 30 or 45 seconds. Okay. And it's better to do more repetitions of it. So I'm okay. going to go down, touch my toes, 
stand back up and make sure I squeeze my butt when I stand back up. Okay. Because that can mess with people who have lower back issues. Sure. So keeping yourself moving and keeping yourself aware of, let's make sure that we're, if I'm doing those toe touches, it's more for my hamstrings okay. and my butt. So the back of my legs, in case you don't know where your hamstrings are, right. the back of your legs and your butt or your glutes. When you're doing toe touches, that's what you're working on. You don't want to feel it in your lower back. Oh, great. Because then you're stretching the wrong muscle for somehow exactly. your hips. Are, okay, gotcha. So now and we're doing the static stretching, and would you, you know what I mean? We're, we're warming the body up. We're kind of letting the heart know, hey, by the way, we're getting ready to bring it. So you would say, or is it like arm circles, would you say? I have to tell you, sometimes here in the studio, I have these hooks right here. I don't know if you can see, Derek, but I love grabbing these hooks because when I go to do the pull-up, my spine just, it's like my own chiropractic adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll do some uh, some head circles and some arm circles. I have a, a, a sledgehammer that I work with on a big, huge, old farm tire out back. Those types of things, right, would work in terms of getting the blood, fl the blood flowing. Yeah, uh, okay. definitely. And in the warm-up, you don't want to go from zero to 100 right off the bat. Okay. That is probably one of the worst things you can do. You want to make sure that you do a few lighter things, kind of take it easy. A uh, good warm-up should take you between five and ten minutes okay. of just movement. And okay. you don't have to think of anything complicated. You can do things like arm swings, like you said, arm swings, arm circles. Uh, okay. sitting, getting down and doing a couple push-ups just from your knees or Ooh. assisted push-ups like off okay. of a box or something like that, okay. depending on where you're at. By the way, <laughs> we have toes. Um, <laughs> Look, I love Henry. Henry says, well, that leaves me out. I haven't seen my toes in years. <laughs> uh, but doing things like that, leading into a more strenuous workout, which if you are planning on fat loss, you definitely want to hit more compound movements. So they're things where you're working multiple parts, like a squat, which okay. you don't have to throw a ton of weight on a bar. Sure. You can get a plenty good workout by just focusing on focusing in your mind about squeezing the muscles in your body. Okay. So if you're focusing in your mind and you're going down in a squat and you're not just dropping down into the bottom and flying right back up, if you take two to three seconds to get down to the bottom, okay. wherever that bottom is, it's different for everyone. Some people can't go all the way but to sure. the ground. Some people can't go below their knees. Uh, sure. If you have knee issues, that's a whole other ball game. Okay. But just going down to your individual range of motion okay. and then holding there for a second and then standing up a couple times. Do that 20 times and tell me your legs aren't on fire. And that would be something I could still get away with because I'm not exerting all the pressure, right, to get the weight back up so I'm not worried about blowing a gasket. Uh, uh, Derek, can, you should know Candace says, maybe we can do some exercises on 81 to win. Well, you know, we're talking to Derek. He might be, if for, if for parts of it, he might be here in the studio because one of the things that I've studied in all these years is the, you know, what it takes to keep the human body awake for extended periods of time. And exercise is absolutely one of those things. So Candace, that's a great idea. I'll have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, Derek can take the trip down and, you know, we'll do, maybe we'll do some pull-ups or exercise bike or uh, rowing or something like that uh, during the show because that would be cool. Jen says, does Derek work with people with disabilities and teach modified positions and activities? Jenny, great question. Derek, brother, what say you? How about people with disabilities or are you able to take it uh, regardless of the disability, and say, okay, well, let's modify this position. Let's modify that activity, just like you're doing for me. Is that something you can do for anyone? Uh, it's something I can do for most people. Like most I said, uh, first things first, I'm not a physical therapist. Right. I don't pretend to be one on TV. Right. Um, Good thing. But one thing in my current, so in those boot camp sessions, right. it's everyday people who are coming in. It's not the you know, people who are coming in who have six packs and are ready to go and they're picking up heavy weights or anything like that. Right. It's normal people who come in. Okay, great. And a lot of normal people, they have those nagging knee issues. They have those nagging shoulder issues. Okay. Lots of people have shoulder issues. Okay. Uh, a hmm. lot of them can probably be corrected with just putting them through a range of motion with no weight. Okay. But I do have to work around that. So sure. a lot, uh, let's take a rotator cuff, for example. Okay. Rotator cuff, people think that you have, like, multiple rotator cuffs. I've heard basically everything under the sun. Right. What a rotator cuff is, it's a place where five different muscles, their tendons and ligaments, tie into your shoulder. Okay. So when you have a torn rotator cuff, it can be any one of those five muscles that has been torn. 
Oh. Or it can be multiples. So that doesn't mean a torn rotator cuff is the same for everyone. Some people sure. can raise their arm up just fine in front of them. Some people can't. Some people can press over their head, but they can't raise it over to their side. So hmm. depending on what that is, we restrict that range of motion to the things that you can do without pain. Because pain is your body saying that something is wrong. And I'm not talking the soreness that you get, sure. like, oh, man, my legs are really sore. I did, a sure. lot of, I did a lot of squats the other day. I'm talking the shooting pain, something's wrong, ow, this hurts. This kind really hurts, right. right. That's and the th- pain that you want to avoid. And when people say no pain, no gain, I hate that, but right. they, that's how people get injured. Sure. Sure. Well, I would imagine you have to be pretty astute at knowing when someone's trying not to push their comfort zone and then someone that's really hurting or injuring themselves uh, with the work that you uh, that you tell them to do. So I imagine that's a part of it um, as well. So Derek, let's talk, can you tell me a little bit about synovial fluid? Because if you're doing these range of motion exercises, say in rotator cuffs or this or that, isn't every little bit that you're able to do, just like building a muscle, isn't that good? Because the more synovial fluid you get into a joint, the more it tends to loosen up over time. And someone that may come to you with bad shoulders or rotator cuffs from sitting over a keyboard typing all day long, have you found that you know if you do a little bit every time that it gets better because of the increased range of motion? So I'm going to use the most fitness answer of all time and say it depends <laughs> okay. um, because there's a lot more to joint health than just a fluid. Okay. Um, there's also cartilage and all of those other things okay. involved, but it does definitely help uh, with the increase of that to be able to go through that range of motion. Um, the biggest thing for ranges of motion is to... Slowly, uh, and I'm talking after workout is actually perfect for this. Okay. Is to go through some of those longer extended static stretches. Um, Great. One of the reasons that it's not good to do those static stretches for a long time before working out is because your muscles work off of tension, and when you stretch, you relieve that tension. You actually get temporarily weaker when you do that. Afterwards, you're not looking to be super strong. You're looking to help stretch everything out. So sitting in literally, uh, for some people, they can't sit on their knees back onto their butt. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example because there's no video here. Um, but sitting, they can't sit back on their butt, uh, their heels, or their butt touching their heels from right. sitting on their knees. But that's also a really, really good stretch for your quadriceps or the fronts of your legs if you don't have that range of motion. Do you know where I tend to get it the most now, Derek, because I haven't been able to run or bike or do anything in a couple of years? Where I get it the most is when I do that full stretch, I have no problem sitting back, getting my glutes back on my heels, but I I get Charlie horses in my toes because, believe it or not, the musculature that's having a difficult time is around the ankle going out to my toes. So I can sit back on my butt all day until those right, those cramps in my feet kick in, and then as soon as I start to sit up, they go away. But with time, that's something um, that I bet your body grows accustomed to. Yeah, and you can also do stretches to stretch out the muscles around your ankle. Like your calves are really good, or you can take something like a golf ball, Okay. And you can actually rub your foot kind of hard on the on rub the bottom of your foot on that okay. golf ball, All right. and that can help out a little bit too. Oh, very cool! So, there, so whenever there's a joint issue, it's very rarely specifically the joint. Like most knee issues, honestly, are uh, dysfunctions of either the ankle or the hip. Gotcha. And gotcha. by fixing those things, or by going through physical therapy for those things, sometimes knee issues will fix themselves. Or sometimes if you waited, if you've had knee problems for 40 years, sometimes it might be a little too or a little too far gone to actually make it completely better. Gotcha. But you can always improve it a little bit. Gotcha. And there, that's all, honestly a whole other conversation I could spend a long right. time talking well, about. Well, your that. dad will probably shoot me some dirty eyeballs here in just a little bit. Jamie says, great info, Jamie. I absolutely agree. Derek, in our closing 30 seconds, can you tell everyone how they can get a hold of you, um, where they can find you on Facebook or over on your, uh, your, on your website? What's the quickest way that someone can reach out to you and learn a little more of your expertise? And then obviously we'll have you on to do multiple shows or, or segments within 
within the shows as uh, time moves on. But quickly, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, right now, Facebook or Instagram is the best way to find me. You can go find me at facebook.com slash the Derek Noel, and that'll link you right to Derek Noel Fitness. Or you can find me on Instagram also at the Derek Noel. That is D-E-R-E-K because there are tons of different spellings for Derek. Okay. And O-E-L, just like Christmas. Sounds good. All right, brother, we're out of here so that we can make room for Henry and thinking re-envision. Thank you so much, Derek. I'll talk to you here in just a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. We're going to have Derek back. But for now, that's all the time we have. Have an absolutely fantastic evening. And remember, it's always a good time to mortal up. IPMNation.com. 